What's up guys, it's Alex, Drive Shafts on Motorcycles. So I've been meaning to make this video ever since I made the chains versus belt videos and I do get the question, you know, what about drive shafts, what about drive shafts? So we're going to cover it right now, okay? So in that video a couple of weeks back, I covered pros and cons, differences between chains and belts in motorcycles because motorcycles really have three main ways that you move the back tire, okay? You got chains, which we covered in the other video, and if you guys missed that video, I'm going to put it like in a little card somewhere at the top of the screen, like right now, so you can click on that to catch that video and then come back to this one to catch up. So we covered chains, right, and belts, and the big differences between the two of them, pros, cons, all that kind of good stuff, right? So you really have a third major way to move the back tire of a motorcycle, you know? So drive shafts have been around for quite some time, really pioneered by both like BMW and some of the Japanese manufacturers. Uh, BMW, of course, crazy known for it. Um, Honda really likes to use them. Yamaha has used some. Suzuki's used some. Kawasaki's used some. You know, there, there's a lot of companies that use them. Um, the big difference with the drive shafts, and I'll show you what I'm talking about right now. This thing I'm sitting on is a V-Star 650, and it's got a drive shaft. Okay, a drive shaft on a motorcycle, just like on your car, if you're not familiar with it, is simply a rod or shaft that connects your motor, transmission, to your rear wheel by a differential, okay? It turns, it turns a differential gear, your back tire turns. That's how that works, okay? Big thing with a drive shaft is, here's where a drive shaft comes into play over a chain or a belt. If you are on a larger bike, and this is a V-Star 650 and it had a drive shaft, so not necessarily always just a larger bike, but most of them are going to be bigger bikes, okay? Because they need bigger motors and more torque to keep up with turning a drive shaft over a chain or something like that. But if you want the absolute most long-lasting, don't have to mess with it, good for the life of the bike, drive line, you want a drive shaft. Most guys that don't like drive shafts don't like them because of the difference of power transfer and on some bikes especially big cruisers they're not quite as smooth in some cases I'll go into a pros and cons video later I'll, I'll do one later where I compare it to the other drive types but just for basics a drive shaft is just going to be a solid metal shaft usually steel or aluminum that connects your transmission to your rear wheel and it's what turns your rear wheel if you don't have a chain or a belt okay that's drive shafts they're good for sturdy long life that's what they are good for. They are good for being the longest lasting, most sturdy, least maintenance type of drive line on a motorcycle. It's drive shaft really basic. That's real basics. You've got some solid ones, like solid drive shafts on some cruisers. You've got different kinds. Most of your sport touring bikes or more sport oriented or adventure kind of bikes that have got drive shafts on them have what I call a flex shaft where it'll have pivot points in it so the shaft can flex. Um, lots of in and outs of that. If you guys have specific questions on drive shafts or you're wondering about a bike that has a drive shaft and you want to know if it's a good bike or if it's smooth enough or what I think about it, put them in the comments. Always happy to answer them. I just wanted to really quick go over just the basics on drive shafts for you because I didn't cover them in that other video. And here really soon I will do two other videos, drive shaft versus chain and drive shaft versus belt just so you've got the full spectrum of all that kind of stuff. Okay guys, until then, take it easy. I'm Alex. Subscribe if you dig it. Peace.